He said expressly that all you have to do is your town board has to adopt a resolution for a shared service agreement. And believe me, we can go back to, to Eric and I when we first came in, into these offices. There was a lot of shared services that were going on between intermunicipal agreements. But there was no physical agreements. Do you know how many legal documents we've had to go through now? Like every year there's something new. Oh, we've always shared that service. Why now? We have to do another shared service agreement to do this data, to do that information. County is not going to hand over the information. They're requesting and requiring that we do a town board resolution. Woodstock has done the same. They, they've passed that resolution. We're looking to do the same thing. There's other towns that are concerned with short-term rentals. Again, it's just to get the data. And as I said, you can look at the document if you'd like. It's really stating that if you do put a regulation in place, again, County of Ulster does not regulate zoning or planning within the town of Shandaken. The town of Shandaken does it wholly within itself as a home rule state. So the county can't impose a regulation on us. It's us creating it. If we do a regulation and do a permitting process, they just want reciprocal information coming back to them so they can cross-reference their data and say, okay, yeah, we see there's 128, you had 128 signed up, okay, great. We're, we're getting the money that we need and we're, we're good this month. So uh, again, I'm more than, up. I don't have a problem handing over the agreement, letting you guys look at the agreement if you'd like. I mean, um, is there any problem like uh, adopting the resolution next month? You can table it till next month, that's fine. I just, I threw that it on be there great. because we wanted data yeah. for this month's meeting. Um, and I talked to Dennis Doyle, who was willing to come and do a presentation probably at the January meeting for the yeah. SDR. I just had one thing that, I'm Kevin Van Blark, I'm also on the committee. Um, thank you all for being here, and I totally understand uh, your concerns about tonight's resolution. The one thing, I, and Brian, this goes back to what you said, there seems to be some concerns about the logistics and what and how this committee was formed. It wasn't fast track. Last spring, there's a lot of new faces here, but uh, it's televised, so I assume a lot of you watched the town board meetings. It was televised, and we had com uh, community members coming to the meetings last spring complaining. And that's when, after three meetings, we decided, well, maybe we should get a, com a, com a committee together just so we can find out that not to do it. To say that Rob handpicked anyone is 100% inaccurate. Every member of the zoning board, the planning board, and the town board was given equal opportunity to volunteer. So if you have a problem with who's on the board, talk to those people and ask why they didn't volunteer. Dave. I just want to thank you for being so open to discussion about this. I know it's a controversial issue all over the country, and even in Tibet, I think there are but um, we, the, you do need to have more representation on that committee from uh, Airbnb people specifically, because I think that's one flavor that is bringing this whole thing to uh, the point where we need to really talk about it. And other, uh, say, what you call absentee landlords, what I would call my neighbors, uh, weekenders or neighbors, um, and I think uh, the, the Resolution had some focus on the, the, the necessity to move forward because of the negative impacts, but I think if you had more re balanced representation on the committee, you might get a, uh, a more um, beneficial um, um, way to move forward. I think. Can believe it, again, the, the language of the resolution, you can talk to county, just the same as we have resolutions that we have that are handed to us. Uh, through CWC, through, for the septic maintenance district. I mean, that's all legal documents that are sent to us. Believe me, if it was my choice, it would be, whereas we'd like to do this, therefore be it done. I mean, that'd be that simple. More, uh, yeah. seats on the committee. So, right. And I, I understand what you're saying about having more seats and more representation. I think our thought process, like Rob alluded to before, of having people that are, one, most qualified being planning zoning board members and also the people in the best position to deal with this, don't, I think our thought was that in order to have a completely unbiased committee, having someone who's an Airbnb owner and who represents those values, doesn't it make it, doesn't it muddy the water a little bit? And so I understand where you're coming from and you're, you're shaking your head immediately, but if you were on the board, we know where you stand. You're thinking it, it would muddy the water to have? No, no, it, um, maybe that's poor vernacular, but what I'm saying is- it, it would be bad to have somebody from- We're, we're the coming from a non-biased position. We're trying to. I'll, I'll remind you too, the folks that were at that meeting, if you recall, the first, the first word out of the box from the gentleman sitting front and center 
was stating that nobody on this committee should be part, you know, so there's other residents in this town. Nobody on this committee should be an Airbnb renter. And then accused me of being on Airbnb, but my in is not on Airbnb. It's just what, what you are, sorry, what do you want? Uh, you you, you, you own, a, own a bed and breakfast, right? I'm an in. Right, but yeah, so right. actually that's an SDR, that actually it? should really yeah, be commercial yourself, zone. because that is the dynamic. The big dynamic in the whole issue has been between hotel, inn owners, etc. And in fact, there's two people that are on the board um, that actually represent a, um, as far as I understand, actually are in or hotel owners. I mean, Peter's also. It's not, oh, on the it's, not it's not on the committee. It's not on the board. Not 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 the board. I can have an Airbnb if I want it, but I choose to have a full time rental because I see so many um, people, good people who need full time rentals up here that can't afford to rent. So I turned my Airbnb into a full time rental. But I totally understand that the Airbnb, I mean, I think it's great too. So I'm not against that. I just, I choose to use my properties for full time rentals. And, and you know, may I have a house? So, I'm sorry, could you first. introduce I, yourself? Please? My name is Bruce Van Horn, and I've been up here since 2011. I have a house, and I rent it out because I have a condo in Florida. And I use Airbnb, and um, I think it's a great tool. It's a community, and people have uh, trust in the people that are coming into their, to their homes because we have this community we set up. And uh, I'm sort of disappointed in the whole process of what's going on here. And I have to tell you that, you know, the real risk right now is uh, a life limit and, 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 and you know, well-being because I've almost been hit by ash trees that have fallen down on power lines. And you guys are spending your time on this whole issue right now when you really should be spending your time on how we're going to eradicate this ash tree problem. If they're causing power line problems, the power is going out frequently, and we should spend our energy on positive things, not on negative things. Thank you, Mr. Um, I had a birthday the other day, and wow, lots and lots of years. <laughs> and uh, I've kind of found out over the years that uh, changes occur. And when I came here in the early 60s, we had a lot of hotels. Some of them were quite operative, and there were places that people came and slept comfortably. And going back to the turn of the century, over in Aylenville, there was the Catskill Mountain House. And that was the beginning of resort communities. All those big hotels that used to be operative here were burned down in my time and the time of many of you. People don't understand how beautiful it is to come to a wonderful place, do a lovely day of skiing, and then need to drive home because they don't have a nearby bed. Yes, there are problems with STRs. I want one. It's a hell of a good job. I'm on the phone for hours yeah. with people that are support, but give me agita. I think you know what that is. So uh, there are benefits. And I only beg this committee, which is mysterious to the public and taxpayers of our community, will understand that providing beds and welcoming guests to our most wonderful region, will be a positive development, will create a tremendous economic boom, which will support local services and support town costs. And at the same time, if folks don't live here, their tax money supports the school. And I have, as a neighbor coming, a huge monster hotel. Yes, it's commercially zoned, but the owners don't live here, and why should local residents be denied the privileges of people who don't live here without going through the costs? We're little operators. It's less than a mom and pop operation. We don't have facility to create the paperwork, the administrative, all of these things. We just have the ability to welcome people with love, with hospitality and with an attachment to the environment and the nature and the artists who live here and produce and the musicians who live here and produce. 
the service folks who help us all when we're in trouble and will help outsiders immediately because their services are available. There is good to come from STRs. Let us pray. <laughs> Tier structure, and you have a core committee. And if you had bed and breakfast people, an STR representative, and a hotel representative that would be designated, those are, I think, are the three primary uh, people that are in the hospitality business in the township of Shandagan, a representative from each. And then the committee, when it meets at a critical milestone in drafting a resolution or whatever, you could bring in representatives from those three hospitality entities to provide input and dialogue to the committee. They wouldn't have to be part of the committee, but you could have a more formal exchange of information in a way that you guys can control the dialogue and the flow without having 10 people popping up and down during meetings and you know, or having one representative only of STRs and not bed and breakfast or the local hotels. So if you had this a simple representative from each of those communities serve as consultants to the committee as part of the dialogue, those three representatives could then go back and talk to their community, share the information with that community, and then expedite the process in a way that's fair and balanced, which I think, Rob, I appreciate what you say. I think I've heard it of 25, but maybe more, where you said you're looking for a fair and balanced process. So that would be my recommendation. Does Airbnb, they pay uh, occupancy tax, correct? To the county? To the county, yeah. Okay, county and are they paying sales tax to the state? Anybody? Yes. Yeah. Well, we pay taxes on the But actually, the sales tax 4% goes back to the, the sales tax 4% goes to the county, I believe, and 4% goes to the state. Okay, but as well as the bed tax. Okay, Scott, yeah. you can just address the board. Okay. Um, all right, uh, the sales tax is 8% in the state of New York. Combined with the 2% occupancy tax, makes up 10%. If Airbnb uh, owners are going to uh, only pay 2%, that doesn't seem very fair to the legitimate owners of a hotel, an inn, a bed and breakfast, etc. cetera. Um, and I understand the need for people to make extra money but I don't understand the need to take business away from legitimate organizations that go through inspections and pay taxes, both state and local. And also, uh, in neighborhoods where somebody might have an Airbnb and there's a house next door across the street, somebody's gonna come to an Airbnb and they're gonna raise hell all night, and the neighbors are the ones that are suffering. If the Airbnb owner is not living there, they don't know what the neighbors are going through. And I think that's a key component. Now, I've done a lot of research over the last couple of years about this, and I've spoken to some members of the uh, legislature about this. And I don't think, I understand the motivation here is money for people that are doing Airbnb, and that's what it boils down. There's really no other motivation. Um, it's not gonna be because you're a good person and you want to offer somebody some lodging uh, at a cheap rate because there's no other place to stay. The fact is right now is that the lodging members, and we have several dozen plus other entities in the, in the association, 
We're losing business, legitimate business, to Airbnbs. Just this last weekend, uh, my own place, I have the Alpino Scrivia bed and breakfast, by the way, up in High Mount. Uh, typically the number one lodging destination up here for bed and breakfast, year after year, especially in the winter because of the location. But I've noticed myself that I personally am losing business, and I know it's Airbnb just from anecdotal evidence that I'm getting from people that come to my place. And that people that visit me that used to come as regular guests, but now they're doing Airbnb because of the money. So it's eroding, it's beginning to erode the base for all the people that own legitimate businesses here that provide accommodations. And if we, even if Airbnb were to pay the 10% tax like we do, that money is coming, if, if a dollar comes out of my pocket because they're staying at an Airbnb, it's a zero sum game for taxes. You're not, make, you're not creating more human beings that are gonna come here and rent. Whoever's going to come here is going to come here. They're going to gain some type of lodging if they're not day trippers. I've been here almost 20 years now. And in that time, I've never seen such a decline, especially in the last 18 months to two years, in business. Because I'm the president, I'm in touch with pretty much everybody in the area. Um, and I get the anecdotal evidence. I get some numbers I could supply at some point to you if you'd like that. Um, but... I don't think that the Airbnb owners care about what happens to a B&B or a motel or a hotel in the area. They're eroding our base because Airbnb steps on your feet and they say lower your prices. And I think it's 3%, I could be wrong, it might have changed, but I think it used to be 3% that they were paying the Airbnb very low. If the ticket's a thousand dollar rental, they're getting 30 bucks. If I'm wrong about that, I'd like to be corrected so I can be more and more. Airbnbs across the country in neighborhoods have eroded the neighborhoods because there's so many Airbnbs popping up. And because they're unregulated, and because the owner is not required to be there, um, the neighbors are moving out to other places, to other states even, let alone towns, because they don't want to put up with the noise, the distraction, and um, uh, basically staying up all night in some instances. Um, now, I'm up for Airbnb, and I'm up for uh, any type of short-term rental if the, uh, the playing field is leveled, both in terms of paying the proper amount of taxes, having inspections, having the owners be present so that they can't go out and rent a dozen Airbnb properties. And that's become the real problem. Airbnb in the beginning was good. It was a good idea. I have an apartment, my roommate moves out, I need some extra money, I'm gonna go on Airbnb, it happens. But I'm living there, I can control that part of it. If I have an Airbnb up here, and I don't live here, and I especially don't live on that property, anything goes. And that's becoming a real significant problem because there's no regulation to it. Anybody can open up an Airbnb. In fact, Rob, um, recently I was thinking about converting to an Airbnb so I won't have to pay the 8% tax to the state, and so I don't have to be regulated, so I don't have to go through any inspections. So if an Airbnb owner lives there and is there present while the people are renting, no problem, I have no problems with that at all, is that when you go and, and seek out an organization or a company like Airbnb to do the work for you, because maybe you couldn't do it on your own, maybe you could, but Airbnb makes it really easy. They hold your hand, they charge you a very, very low percentage, and you get good advertisement worldwide now. Now there are some instances, I'm not gonna mention them, I'm not gonna drag this on, but where entire cities are being vacated and this is international, this is not here in the United States as far as I know yet. Because there's too many Airbnbs and the owners got tired of it and are moving out and actually vacating the cities. And if anybody wants to talk to me at some point in time, I can provide you documentation. It's not something I'm making up. Like I said, I've been researching this for the last couple of years. It's like a tsunami in the distance. You, can, you know it's coming, but it hasn't come there yet. What are your sources, your research sources? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah.
Okay. Like, like I said, Rob, I can provide to you and you can share with these people what I'm saying to you. This is being recorded. I know it's being recorded. Whatever I say, if it's not the truth, I'm gonna look really stupid. So I'm repeating to you what I know as fact from all the research I've done. And I can name you states in this country where neighborhoods are being broken up. Now, the noise issue is one of the big issues. Folks, I have a gavel. I'll run this meeting. I ask Scott if we could wrap it up. Uh, again, I didn't intend, and I even said it to Kevin downstairs. I said, I think there's going to be a couple of short term rental people here. I said, We're not having a public hearing on yeah. short term rental regulation yeah. because we don't have a regulation. Okay, so the last thing I want to say, though, is before, before I leave, the last thing I want to say is I know the motivation is money. It might not be for a and b owner totally the money. They might enjoy what they're doing, but that's because they're there and they're part of the process. They're not just in it for the money. But my question would be to the board, when you consider a, a resolution or something to do uh, that's going to regulate uh, the Airbnb industry here, I would ask that you consider how these houses and these apartments with no owners are eroding our base for lodging because I feel it personally, and and I and I've got the most successful place up here. So if it's hurting me, I know it's killing other people. And I just I, I just want to leave with this one thing. I want to know if anybody in this room, anybody in this room, anybody that's not present that has an Airbnb, if they care about the community here and in the other surrounding we're gonna, areas. We're going to leave that as a rhetorical question. Yeah. Yes. No, but, yes. but, but I'm saying we're going to be here all night about but, well, saying no, how much we can. Yeah, Scott, but but your, when you're in it just for the money, if oh, you're oh, in it oh, just oh, for the oh, money. Oh, oh, sit down. Scott, I'm going to ask you very hard. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Listen, first of all, I'm proud to be up here. I'm not ashamed to be an up here, Charlie. <laughs> I'm not ashamed at all of being up here. I'm proud of being up here. by saying you can do We're done. All right. Conversation. Uh, thank, thank you for your time. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, again, I will remind everyone that yeah, I see the hands waving in the back, but if it's more on this issue, um, we're going to let sleep, sleeping dogs lie. Again, we will table the resolution, I think, for the Where's Ulster the County. Line? Table the resolution so they can get a look at the agreement with the county. Again, it's the same agreement that okay. would stop Thank you. We, we appreciate that enormously. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. Um, yeah. but, but I'd also like to explain, um, I don't know, maybe it's been a couple of years since some of you folks, I know you used to be pretty raucous at these board meetings. Um, we will speak to each other with respect in here. You will not disrespect somebody, and even if you disagree with what they're saying, everybody has had their chance to have an opportunity to speak at some point tonight for the most part. So I'd ask you that if in the future, when we do have more hearings, and I'm sure we will we'll talk about this more, but I ask that you just be respectful of the other people in this room. Again, this isn't, this isn't Capitol Hill. This is Shandy. So you're going to run into these people at the store, and maybe you're going to drop your eggs on the ground, and maybe they're not going to catch them because you were nasty to them maybe, okay? I'm just saying. Like, please be respectful to one another and know that you may have different opinions, but we all live in the same town. We're just looking out for what's the best for our town and trying to address it. So. Yeah. Any other comments and resolutions? Other resolutions. Other resolutions. <laughs> Anybody here against the heater for the rich one? And just so everybody knows, all our meetings are on our YouTube channel, all the planning, zoning, and town board meetings. And we've been doing it for seven years. So when we made that announcement quite a long time ago, looking for people for short-term rental committee. Two t well, it was two <laughs> people. <laughs> so nobody came forward. And are there a lot of YouTube or after the fact? What's that? We've got our meetings on for seven years. Well, two days after, I put them up. If there's no further comments and resolutions, um, I'd like to entertain a motion to table two resolutions this evening. One being the resolution 140-18 and the other being 142-18 for the Town Road Medical Building. And just to explain on that, um, in meeting with the Consortium of Doctors, not liberty to say who it is yet, but 
Um, they were asking for a little bit more than repairs of the flooring and paint and stuff in the building. They actually were requesting that we could build another exam room within an existing building, which I think is doable um, for not a lot more money. But uh, there is some electrical work included in that and other instructional work, so we're going to have to get contractors to come in and look at it to measure it up to give us an appropriate bid. Right now, the bids that we're receiving tonight are really just for flooring and for a coat of paint on the walls. So. Yeah, I met with the contractors and they were giving their bids, but it wasn't for the exact thing that the doctors wanted in a secondary visit, so we have to do it all over again now. So it'll um, be next month. So I'll entertain okay. a motion on that. I'll make that motion. Do have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So those are taken. Uh, moving on to resolutions. <coughs> Resolution 135-18, resolution to pay all bills. Whereas the Department of Audit and Control require town boards to sign and inspect all vouchers coming into the town for payment to number and total amounts from each fund. Therefore, be it resolved that the town board authorizes the following vouchers paid. General, $58,364.43. Highway, $115,040.10. Phoenicia Water, $3,512.49. Pine Hill Water, $454.27. Phoenicia Lights, $1,070.41. Chichester Lights, $158.58. And Pine Hill Lights, $597.52 for a total of $179,179.80 and move its adoption. What is that? 197. Oh, sorry. I'll second. Board Member Alba? Yes. Board Member Storm? 